Fans of Space Lords and political satire, thank you very much for joining me for a how-to video on how to make your very own Lord Buckethead. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Lord Buckethead, Lord Buckethead is an enigmatic figure that has manifested or visited the Earth and Great Britain specifically and very specifically England on three occasions over the last several decades. The most recent manifestation of this was a few days ago. So let me show you a quick photo of this Lord Buckethead figure. Yes, here is a recent photo of Lord Buckethead. He's got this kind of black cape, distinctive tall helmet with a, I believe some sort of respirator or voice piece, a, a blue vision slit and a, generally quite a dark paint scheme. Um, although it, it, a silver inside to the cloak and here's another picture of Buckethead uh, as often seen using a microphone. Answer questions perhaps. So that is what Lord Buckethead looks like. There aren't any Lord Buckethead niches available on the market at the moment. So I had to look for alternatives and this afternoon I came across one. Here we have some cheap tatty Star Wars model of Darth Vader. Now I managed to bribe this off my son for two pounds. I think he actually probably conned me there. My idea is given that Darth Vader has all this uh, kind of like dark colored gear on, this guy would make a rather neat Buckethead. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to convert this Darth Vader into Lord Buckethead. Do a little and we're going to do kind of like the whole thing. We're going to paint, we're going to convert and paint at one go. So I've got a few paints in the background and the brushes and that's the aim. So what we've got, so in terms of parts we've got this plasticky Darth Vader with this you know nice straight lightsaber. Most of it's already painted so that's good. We've got a Spe Games Workshop 32mm base so good to actually find a use for those things and we have and perhaps the most important piece of all is something to make the famous bucket head and I, as I often do I keep bits of resin offcut sprue and I found this one in my spare parts box and I think this is just the right thickness to create a bucket head. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously decapitate Vader. We're going to convert the lightsaber into a microphone, mount him on a base, and then we'll add this head. Uh, well, I'll, I'll cut this down and turn it into a bucket head. So that's the plan. And then once I've done that, we're going to paint this. We're going to put his visor on, his mouthpiece, put this, do the silver inside of his cloak, and then finish up by mounting it on this base. And I think it's going to be quite a smart model and a really neat addition to my Horus Heresy army. Well, of course, if Forge will get around to doing any rules for it, but, uh, you know, and I guess Buckethead as a space lord doesn't really fit into the Warhammer 40,000 lore, but, you know, I guess Matt Ward can wreck on that. So tools we've got, a couple of craft knives, got a pair of snippers, is going to be important for the decapitation process, a selection of files and smoothing boards, so we've got a needle file, a sanding stick, and then a polishing stick. Because I like my models to stay together, I've got a pin vise, and I'm going to do the, use this to pin the bucket head in place using some piano wire. As always, our friend Dusty Brush is with us. Medium thin super glue, a can of accelerant because we want to work quickly here, and then a selection of paints. Now, because the bucket head has appeared uh, on three separate occasions through time, so he was sighted in 1984. 1992 and again in 2017. I've tried to get a selection of paints and encompass that time range and I've nearly managed it. Here we've got a Citadel colour chainmail from 19, circa 1987. So there we go, one going all the way back in time. A black ink from about 1992. That's probably also from about 87, 88. I think that's ultramarine blue. Got a a skull white, maybe from early 90s, about 92 again. And then we've got a pot of Tamiya Flat Black XF1. That's about, you know, about now, 2017. We've got Tamiya paint, we've also got some X20A thinners and some water as well, which is here. So let's begin this uh, novel little conversion video. So I think we will start by crafting the bucket head. So I'm gonna, we're gonna, it, there's a couple of mold seams, well, mold seams on this because I mean and clearly um, there's never any need to have posts on um, on casting gates to be aligned so these are just you know they're, 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 we just need to take those away so we wouldn't judge the quality of the as a po of the posts because there's no need for these parts normally to uh, have any functional use a little bit of quick sanding will uh, nicely get this looking good 
So yes, we. So I was going to do the 2,000 subscriber giveaway draw video today, but unfortunately, due to a lack of Dragon Master availability, I've postponed that to tomorrow. Although I have taken the winners list of, I have taken the list of comments from the comment section. So um, as I said, after Saturday yesterday evening that you know the competition will be closed so there are no more entries now and all all the all the draw is prepared i just need to film it so i'll do that tomorrow and then i'll uh, i will hopefully get it posted tomorrow evening right so let's do so what i'm doing now is so i've i've smoothed off the sides of that oh got a little bit there let's uh let's just take that down to make it so we want you know as always I, I want to although this is perhaps a slightly unusual piece of modeling i do want to make a you know, I want, I want to have a, more, a bucket head that I can be proud of at the end of this work. So, and and there's quite possibly the first ever miniature of Lord Buckethead. I think we should, you know, pay our Space Lord visitor from whatever dimension he exists in, or part of space, a, a modicum of respect in rendering him into miniature form. I need to now. We need to try and decide how tall the bucket head needs to be. Going back to our bucket head photo. The bucket head appears to be about the height of the torso, perhaps maybe about three quarters the height of a torso. So I'm going to use that principle. If that's his kind of torso there, it's feel about that height. So I'm gonna just mark that there. Well, let's cut it a little bit high. Let's do it a little bit high and then we can always take it down a notch. Another good thing about this video is just a, it's just a, a way to, I guess, demonstrate how even the weird, most weird and wacky miniature conversion ideas can be quite quickly realised with a little bit of creativity and, you know, just using random bits and pieces you may have lying around the house or in your bits box. I hope I'll be, you know, bringing you guys and girls a service here with this uh, little demonstration. All right, so just work our way around here. Yep. Yeah. Right, so let's it's not entirely straight, but that doesn't matter. We can uh, sort that out easily enough with a little bit of knife work. So let's cut that down. One of these ends I want to be nice and square because that's going to be the upper part of his well presumably helmet but I don't I'm not sure if well maybe I guess as it's called Lord Buckethead it's probably his bucket as it's on his head I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the precise nomenclature of the Buckethead beings or race I, I don't know how to even categorize them I need to be careful not to slip into any anthropomorphic cliches there trying to describe Buckethead's anatomy that could be a TV show, couldn't it? Right. I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of a lot of you people asking the comments about doing a painting video. So I thought before I uh, get into doing some, shall we say, more useful videos on the Iron Hands and others, and I'll be starting with doing painting on the Primaris Marines before I uh, take the leap of uh, doing the. Iron Hands, which have been a big money and time investment, a very big money and time investment, use the Primaris Plastic Marines for testing paint schemes. Okay, so I wonder, so it's got this keychain in it, so let's start off by just removing that in case it goes, in case there's a, a higher quality product that it looks and it actually goes through the neck. No, it wasn't. So yeah, we could have cut it off without that. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it, using these snippers, I'm going to take off uh, Vader's head. There we go. Okay, got a nice clean separation. Almost Count Dooku like that. Now let's take our crude initial bucket head and see what it's like for it. Well, I think that's looking really rather neat already. And we've not we've hardly done anything, and I'm already feeling like this is going to be an excellent rendition of bucket head. So yeah. Yeah, and that actually fits really nicely onto that zone. That fits really nicely onto the space I left with cutting the head away. So let's just leave that a second. Now, this lightsaber, which is going to become a microphone, I'm going to cut that down because it's in the way at the moment and it's useless. 
So yeah. There we go. Oh, I guess I should really, I feel that his head should slightly nod forward as if he were talking into the microphone. So we need a little bit of careful knife work here to get a bit of a um, angle on the underside of his uh, bucket. So let's do that. You know, we might get on some chat po topics as we move along, but I thought I'd mainly stick to talking about how I actually build this. So if any of um, any of you are inspired to make a bucket head, you might have some useful little, you know, information and hints as well as just watching the visual side of things. Right, I'm going to take a bit more off. And of course we need to do a pin as well. I was very lucky that um, my son had this uh, model of Vader because when I thought about doing this, um, building this really cool miniature, I was really struggling to think for what I could use as a body. And then I just saw it lying around, it was like, there, that's it. So you can see now, so see how I've got, whoops, <laughs> we've dropped the bucket. Uh, we're developing an angle on that. Now he's, he's kind of a bit angled because he's in a bit of a stance. I mean, Vader appears to be in a bit of a, you know, a purposeful stance. And much like Buckethead is often in a purposeful stance as he, uh, you know, wanders around whichever part of England he's visiting. Um, I don't believe he's manifested himself in any other part of the world, well, any other part of the United Kingdom, so be it Scotland, Wales, or Northern Ireland, or indeed any part of the Atlantic archipelago, or indeed the rest of the world, so, you know, somewhat enigmatic. Certainly while he's been here, he has spent quite some time talking into microphones, and I think it is in that capacity that I thought I would try to capture him. Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. Apart from the fact to keep dropping the bucket. Feel he needs a little bit more to, a little bit more angle because it's not quite leaning into the microphone yet with enough purpose and intent uh, to really be a faithful rendition of the, uh, this particular Space Lord. As is a Space Lord, it does imply a plural, a potential plural. So I don't know if there are other uh, similar beings out there. I mean, given that he appears to cruise around in an advanced space cruiser of some form, I'm not sure if it's a warship or not, there may be other space lords waiting to visit the planet Earth. Oh, there we go. Now got a nice bit of an inclination on the bucket head, and he's leaning into the microphone. So I'm, that, was, that was the look I was after. Right, so we're going to do a little bit more work neatening this bucket head up. One does wonder as to what sort of creature Lord Buckethead is, because the bucket is a very tall structure. So I wonder if he's um, if he does have a particularly elongated head, or maybe he's of normal humanoid proportions, but they just have advanced equipment in their you know raised heads, or perhaps I don't know, maybe he's a robot or a cyborg. Okay, so let's drill a hole into the body of, into the bucket head body. This should be very easy because this is just soft and squishy stuff. I'm saying it's soft and squishy stuff, it's got a fair amount of, um, it's quite rubbery so it, it grips. It does grip the um, drill bit somewhat. Yeah, this poses challenges, it doesn't, um, doesn't drill, I mean, given the pla the elasticity, because this is quite a rubbery, elastic material that the Vader miniature has been made from, it's somewhat harder to drill than resin and plastic, which is my preferred medium. Yeah, we'll, we'll get past that. We'll get past that easily enough. That's all right. So it'd be a shame to make this nice uh, bucket head model and then have it break later on, you know, perhaps in the middle of a game or um, when it's pride of place on a miniature shelf. That would be sad to lose bucket head. Oops, a little bit of a whack there. Right, so. Um
Yeah, talking of video, so um, let's have a little think about chat topics. Let's talk about videos. Um, I've still got I've still got the Contempt or Killer Gallery to do uh, the giveaway video. I hope you enjoyed Retro Hammer Seven on the World Eater Marines. That was a uh, that was certainly fun doing that, and also the cacti videos. That was uh, that was a novel and uh, humorous. I hope you enjoyed those. Um, I've got oh, I, I'm going to see what I can get done this week. I've got an awful lot I want to get done. I mean, I think the priority is to get that gallery video done, and then move on to new projects. I mean, the Zixi and Hell, for example, uh, another another thing to work on. Oop, new another tool we need. We're going to need these. Uh, Strong clippers. Yeah, there's Ixie and Hale to do now as well um, as a build video and reviews on him. I see some of this might slip a bit, so I've um, been quite busy recently with uh, with real life. Come the weekend, so Saturday is release date for Saturday the 17th of June is a release day for 8th edition. So I will clearly be all focused on getting a review out of that, an unboxing review. I mean, okay. The people, some people have had been some early reviews from. I don't know. Re, re, I don't know exactly how people got hold of copies. I'm guessing they're retailers who've been allowed to break the sales embargo or whatever GW has. But obviously, you know, I want to. I want to bring you guys a review from the point of view of a full, a fully paying customer. So someone who has forked out their own money to review Eighth Edition. You know, and 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 so I'll be very focused on getting that done, and then. I'll also then, well, the billows just do do painting models, building models, reviewing the rule book. Yeah, it's going to all be busy. And uh, I guess in amongst all that, I should actually get some eighth edition games in. Right. So, a quick update on the bucket situation. This is looking rather neat. Quite like that. I think probably got the bucket around about the right height. I've got the nice cant on it, so he looks like he he's leaning into the microphone and. Uh, talking to his audience or whatever it may be. So I'm just going to bob him there for a moment. I'm just going to have a quick check back to the bucket head photo to make sure I'm happy with the proportions. So that's a pretty enormous head. I mean, I think it might be a little bit narrower than the bucket head of bucket head. So here is bucket head. Here's my bucket head. Might be a little bit narrower, but you know, I think this is probably a first. So I'm going to go with this. I think it's. A, I still think it's a pretty faithful rendition of Buckethead. Okay, let's stick that in place. I'm going to use some accelerant to set this because we're going to move straight on and get painting. Sure, how good a bond super glue is going to give on this rubbery plastic. It doesn't tend to stick things like that, but with the pin, I'm hoping it'll have the desired effect. Hopefully, uh, super glue accelerant isn't too dangerous. Uh, flammable, irritant, and toxic to the environment. Mm. There you go. So Buckethead's now got his bucket head. Excellent. So I think pretty much most of our work is done here in terms of the actual build. We just need to mount him on a base. Now for his base, he's kind of the Vader figures at a bit of a funny angle and you can see that that maybe looks a little bit kind of weird. So I want him to be almost like a bit tilted forward. I'm going to, how could we best do this? Maybe if I cut some of his foot away, which I don't think is going to show up in the final analysis, just to And then we'll put a little spacer under his other foot to put him at an angle and then it'll all look super duper. Yeah, so next weekend is 8th edition weekend, so exciting stuff. We haven't had uh, any more leaks about new products. We've seen the Repulsor Grav Tank and we've seen the Aerodemptor Dreadnought. Just putting a spacer under his foot. Yeah, but we've not seen anything else new since then. 
I wonder if that's the offering at the moment or if they've got more stuff lurking that they're just choosing to keep in the back pocket for a while. Maybe that's the initial offering. You've got a, a selection of Primaris Marines. You've got a heavy a support walker in the form of a Dreadnought and a main battle tank stroke transport, which is seems to be more of a Land Rover. Well, that doesn't seem. It is more of a Land Rover equivalent than a Rhino equivalent. At least I think it is in the form of the Repulsor. So we've got, you know, there's... But we've, I don't know if, perhaps you guys can correct me, you guys and girls can correct me, if anyone has heard anything about release dates for the Repulsor, or indeed the Redemptor Dreadnought. Fairly happy with that, I'm going to glue that, because we're, we're just going to, th we're throwing caution to the wind on this. This is, this is, you know, this is a sort of modelling when you're in a rush, you've got a game coming up, you need a Lord Bucket head, so you've got to work quick, to, and, you know, get him together in an hour because you need that special character figure ready for the battle okay so this is taking shape nicely paint this spacer uh, once it's painted in black it just simply won't show so let's uh, set all that so try not to stick one's fingers to the model put the glue away now so let's think painting sometimes with uh, accelerant if you set it very quickly or if you breathe on it or if it gets exposed to moisture you get this white crazing effect or well, certainly with um, DIY versions I think if you use um, something like zip kicker which has been which has got a different formulation I, I think that's been specially formulated not to craze so it's designed so you can use it I believe and I'm not 100% sure but I believe so you can use it on canopies, you know, clear transparent canopy parts and lighting details. Right, there we go. So the build is complete. So here we've got Lord Bucket with his distinct bucket head and he's holding a microphone. Right, so we're going to do a bit of painting now. We're going to start with some black and then I'm going to move on from that. I'm going to paint out these details. He doesn't have any discernible details on his clothing apart from his silver cloak. I've got this, um, I cut up an old pass card holder these things never have any use outside of the actual event so that will serve as a bit of a wet palette get the right size brush start with a fairly large brush a bit crude but it will do different brush obviously to dab out a bit of I mean you could there's all sorts of ways you could dab out a bit of this I mean I guess if you've got one to hand one of those little plastic pipettes is a good idea but with that uh, it's useful to use a bit of thinners with Tammy acrylics to keep them mobile of course Tammy thinners is just denatured alcohol right so right, so that's nice. That's been put on nice and thin. We'll need a second coat. But we'll come back to that. So I can paint out any of these details. Right, let's uh, retouch all this. Get retouch around his feet. In terms of his base, I'm not going to base it in this video. Um, I think I might actually leave it to you guys in the comments section to suggest what sort of terrain that Lord Buckethead should be based on. So how, how do you think I should do Lord Buckethead's base? Yeah, comments in the, suggestions in the comment section, please. That would be great, actually. Now this is, uh, is this the gloss black? I just grabbed this, it's, oh, this is flat black, flat black, this is XF1, so this might, we'll see if this dries too matte, because I'd say if I were to kind of, Describe Lord Buckethead. I think he's more of a satin finish sort of space lord. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a bit OTT for him, but we'll um, we'll see. Well, let's give it a go. Now, if I'm doing this right. This is looking incredibly black. 
And it should do, because Lord Buckethead just sort of sucks in all the light around him. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool, that. Yeah, the original paint scheme was done pretty well. No real complaints there. It was, uh, you know, pretty, for, for probably some Foxconn style, per, pro, for someone who's, um, I don't know how much people get paid for making, um, painting these things. And it was certainly listed as being made in China the People's Republic of China, that is. Uh, I don't know what the pay rate's like for painting these things. They must have enormous factories that do them, though, because there's thousands, there's millions of these things in our, in our country. They're everywhere. Just wipe a bit of the excess paint away there. Slightly over the top, right. So the other good thing about using a little bit of a thinner is you can you get a quick drying time. And now Lord Buckethead has actually taken on this quite cool look of this figure of imposing blackness and authority. So we're gonna give him we're gonna give him a couple of minutes to dry. A couple of moments to dry, perhaps, and then we'll think about what we're going to do next. So, I think the next thing that we're going to do is going to paint the inside of his cape. So, for that, as I said, we're going to use the 80s vintage chainmail paint. I think it's one of the oldest paints that I have that is still usable. And then we'll do the details of his helmet, and uh, we'll, we'll just need to do a little bit to finish that mic up. I could just paint it black, but I want to go for a slightly different colour on the microphone to um, to break it up a little bit. So I've got chainmail. Uh, what brushes have we got? These are also I got. I've got all sorts. Uh, this is a Windsor and Newton. Most, a lot of my brushes are Windsor and Newton. Oh, I've got a Pro Art one there. I've got Games Workshop brushes. I've got all sorts of brushes. I bought. I buy brushes from all sorts of places. Art shops. Um, more art shops and uh, and then model shops as well. Games Workshop and Independent. What I might give a try soon is a Tamiya paintbrush, which are quite intriguing. Uh, they're they're a, a somewhat different design to what you might call a European paintbrush. I'm not worth putting it. I'm not sure, but yeah, different sort of handle style design. So, is this, I guess the first question is, this paint, I mean, you may not be able to see this on the camera, but this paint is, shall I say, seen better decades? It is suffering a little bit from aging. But I'm wondering if this may be, you know, like a, a last triumphal hurrah. Oh yeah, that's all right. I've not painted on camera before, so um, I do apologize if this doesn't work very well. This is entirely spur of the moment. So we'll see how we go. With Obviously with a camera setup like this, I have to be careful not to I've sort of perceive that I need to be quite careful with not whacking the camera with the paintbrush handle. So we will see how we go, but that obviously affects the angle at which I can paint. It may require two coats this. We're going to paint this in fairly quickly, and then we're going. To, we'll go back and touch up any error, any sort of uh, mistakes.
One interesting thing I notice here is painting a black model. Well, it just kind of like a all gets sucked in black. So you can see I've gone over there a bit. Rather than let that dry because that will affect the surface texture, just take a damp cloth and wipe the excess away. Still going to need touching up, but it'll just make the uh, touch up job that bit easier. It's probably not quite as shiny as silver as the real Lord Buckethead. However, I mean, I want to, I was, they, the whole age of authenticity was an important thing for me with this painting project. So I really wanted to get a really old painting. So uh, I think it's a compromise I'm going to have to accept um, and just, you know, just go with it. Done it again there. It's quite. I guess being somewhat below what we might expect to, somewhat below, say, Forge World standard of sculpting quality, this miniature, uh, there's less precise definition uh, on detail than you might, say, expect on a. You know, normal with a miniature like this, you'll be doing Forge World character series models. And we, we're a bit short of that standard here, but. So, you know, the detail definition is hazier by comparison, but you know, that said, we will we'll do our best. We'll do our best. Right, you may not see this very well, but I'm just gonna do the cape far between his legs at the rear. Yeah, so I think the real the the main videos I'm aiming to get done this week is the 2,000 subscriber giveaway video, declare uh, prize draw, and the and the contempt at Achilles Gallery video, which I've got all the photos for. I just need to shoot the video portion of it. The other thing I would like to get done this week probably is oh I've got loads to do actually. I'd like to get one more eighth edition pre-release video done and then also I will I've got I'll have a Q&A video to do I suppose we could stagger that a bit actually so that's quite a lot to get done before Saturday don't know if you can see that but I'm quite happy with how I've picked the his cape out at the rear there as well I don't really think there's much else I want to pick out cape wise I think the other the only other thing is to apply a second coat. Oh, yeah, excuse the pun there. I do apologize. That was actually not intentional. I like a good pun, but I think that was a little bit dad joke territory. Now, clearly, I guess those of you who know me from regular videos, you might well say, "Well, what do you expect, Leaky Cheese? You are a dad, and you therefore are going to do dad jokes." And I'm sure if you ask Dragon Master. Uh, and my son, they will attest that they get regularly subjected to dad jokes. I know Mrs. Likachi certainly holds that opinion. Just making sure I got the, all the details. I pretty like that. So let's, um, now I could have spent a lot of time doing careful dry brushing on Buckethead. Um, you know, doing a few nice dry brushes with some dark grey and then washing it down with a few glazers um, to tone it back in and make it smooth. I mean, I, I painted a one of the Terry Pratchett pewter models years and years ago, a death miniature, and I got a really nice, I, that's the way I did his cloaks. So he's got this sort of, the, you know, the, the, his, his thick black cloak on. And using that, I, got, I made the cloak, I made the cloak look really soft and material-like, but yeah, as I said, this is a quick bucket build, so we haven't got time for such frivolity. All right, so let's go back to the black. Back in the black, back in black. There's a song in that somewhere, isn't there? I wouldn't recommend doing this sort of stuff the way I'm doing it normally, because I'm painting sort of onto my board and it's only through sheer cockiness and experience I'm doing this. 
normally I'd, uh, I would highly recommend you paint on paper. But this is what happens when you only have like a brief amount of time to get you to do a bucket build. You know, you do have to sometimes cut corners. So I'm just working a little bit of a, a little bit of thinners into that paint. Right, so I've got a couple, of, I just noticed a couple of little touch-ups there, bits I missed before. Um, Gonna to touch up down his cloak. So I'm using the side of a brush here. Because as I said, because of the relatively poor detail definition, that's quite a useful way of defining an edge by painting it in with the side of a brush as opposed to the nib. That's all right. Doing a couple of bits just in between the legs. I hope you can see it, but I am certainly one of the things when I paint, I do try to, I am quite a neat painter. I guess if you look at my video where I uh, show my bat, the video I did on a uh, battle tech lines, you can uh, get a, perhaps get a feeling for that from uh, seeing that. Uh, ooh, I just noticed he's kind of, he's a bit different to Buckethead. He's got a cloak within a cloak because he's got his main cloak and then he's got his other cloak. I think I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the cloak within the cloak, the inner, which is a slight deviation from the 2017 sighting photos of Buckethead. But I don't know. I think maybe he has like a, a Sunday cloak that he wears for special occasions. I'm not sure. Or maybe like a winter cloak. For when it's a bit colder so i'm going to kind of go with the imagining the idea that this is maybe his his winter cloak and clearly as we're in a early june you know we wouldn't expect to see him in it now i'm also from a point of view of painting this is being painted under artificial light at the moment so i'm painting this uh in the evening I'm not sure if the lighting is quite good enough for um, painting a dark miniature. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll need some more lighting. It's normally I managed to do a fairly decent job with lighting what I'm reviewing and showing you guys, but obviously painting changes that a bit. And uh, I suppose clearly a black model is a, perhaps an unusual case, although it's a, it's a useful example as well because when we get on to do some painting videos uh, we'll be starting with the iron hands and well yes no prizes for guessing their color right so let's go back to the black and yeah, the bucket heads come out really nice rather pleased with that it's captured that sort of tall imposing uh, imperiosity of, of Buckethead, I'm, uh, I'm, I hope, I hope Lord Buckethead will be proud of this uh, rendition. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe the Bucketheads have got rules around painting, making models of them, and maybe I'm going to get atomized when he, uh, if if he finds out about this video, who knows? So what else is happening on channel Leaky Cheese? I don't know if there's much else is happening. Oops, got a bit of paint running there. So I, I guess the main thing at the moment is it's just getting really, really close to the release of 8th edition, which is really, you know, a really big and exciting event of 
the 40k or in the 40k community. Of course, we, are, we, we do get to that precipitous point of reality where we could all be terribly disappointed by the final offering. Now, I, I think enough has been leaked as to suggest that it gives us more than, you know, unless you were super sceptical or fundamentally dislike what's uh, been offered. Things are looking good. I guess reading the rules tells us part of things, but you, it's only once you actually get your miniatures on the table and throw some dice that you really understand what that new game or the new rendition of the game is going to be like. So I'm happy with this. Uh, you can see the inside of his cloak and his winter cloak. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a little bit of detail and paint this microphone. Should we do it? I've got, so we've, we've not got our 90s era paint on yet, so we can cap that one off. Cap off that. And then we'll get some skull white. I'm going to do the handle of the mic in grey, I think. Then we can probably introduce a little bit of metallics into the head of it. I mean, I, I don't know. This is just to try get something other than black onto the model. I mean, most microphones are actually in a, like a matte black color. So this is a little bit kind of maybe inaccurate but it's just to break things up a bit let's bring in some of this silver now some of this black I can always it's like angling for a dark silver grey here So the hour's almost up already. Don't want to go over an hour on the project bucket head. I wonder what I'm going to do with this guy once I've finished him. Don't know. Maybe I might keep him as a little memento of the strange being that visited our world. Maybe, maybe have you, has anyone got a suggestion what I could do with Buckethead once I've finished him? So, there you go. It, it doesn't look great, but it's just really to give something to break it up a bit. So we want to use the same colour to do his little mouthpiece, I think. Yeah, no, that's actually the right, the right colour. And the mouthpiece seems to be about where... If you could uh, almost imagine the strange situation where Buckethead was human, it would be almost about where a person's eyes are, although I'm sure that is um, purely coincidental and there's no sort of actual of vision significance with the position of this uh, of his speaking module there you go. so we've got that, now I need I'm going to go back to the chainmail, I'm going to paint the vision slit on, firstly in silver and then I'm going to paint it back in in blue. Mm, sorry about the focus there. wider. It needs to be a little bit wider yet. Yes, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and touch this up.
I'll do. See, now we've gone from something that was a really poor quality Darth Vader figure to actually a really excellent quality, or at least I like to hope this is an excellent quality Lord Buckethead. Quite pleased with that. Now let's have a little look. So I need to go. Uh, maybe we could just go straight in with the blue actually, and then we'll just put a little highlight on it. That's not ultramarine blue. That's um, enchanted blue, isn't it? Isn't what useless bits of information remains in, in one's mind. Paints just uh, need a little bit more fluidity in that paint, so let's just water that down a touch. I'm wondering if we might need a darker blue. Possibly need a darker blue. Maybe this will do the trick. Polished blue Citadel Metallic. You see, that's a nice deep. Uh, sorry about the shadows, but that's a nice deep rich blue colour. So maybe that'll do the trick. So I think that's. Um, Lacks a bit of depth. That's better. That's the one. to keep a, a very thin silver edge around the blue which is exactly what bucket looks like so very nearly finished now right I'm going to close up some of the paints we don't need now so I think we're done with the black just make the work area a bit tidier the blue out and then we need the white because we're going to use what we're going to finally finish by doing is we're just going to put a little reflection flash on his visor you know, like a light highlight. Just needs to tone it down a bit. Yeah, 
That's nice, you see that? You can tell his imperious power from just a slight little gleam that's on his visor of command. Or, well, his bucket visor. And I think that will do us nicely. And there you have it. Um, in an hour, or well, what's this taken? An hour, yeah, about an hour. Uh, how to create your very own authentic, if there is such a thing when talking about Lord Buckethead, but authentic Lord Buckethead miniature. No, I think that is probably at the right scale to introduce into a 40k game. Maybe when I next do some crusade era battles, maybe this, you know, Lord Buckethead could be the leader. Some strange dark age of technology civilization. Or maybe I'll just put him on my model shelf. Let me know what you think of Lord Buckethead. I will leave some links in the description to what Lord Buckethead is. Um, I will check them out, they're hilariously funny. Probably my next Buckethead project will be to convert the brand new Thunderhawk gunship into his space cruiser. Thank you very much for watching, I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.